but looking across the other side of Joshi Pass there are a few small peaks along this ridge. So what I plan to do is climb one, two or perhaps all three of those peaks tomorrow morning. Morning! I had a good sleep, it was pretty cold. Sun's up already. Very comfortable night actually. Just put some water on. Let's have a look outside. A little bit cloudy. Looks pretty good to me. See there's a bit of frost on the tent. So, just got to get some drink and some food and I'll see if I can climb those peaks. So it looks like I need a bit more water. Got a handy pile of snow out here. Ah. Put that in there. So I've got a few of these meals. Gonna go for this. Let's add boiling water and let it hydrate. So I've reached the first top along the ridge. So that's my tent down there. And here it is. Now I know there are cornices all the way along here, so I'm keeping well back. In fact, when you can see holes like this, that's an indication that could be hollow under there. So I'm going to wander along to the second top, and the third top, just there in the sun, and then I'll come back. Because beyond that, I think, is a separate peak which has been climbed before. But I don't think anyone's bothered to do these three. So it's been quite enjoyable so far, just coming up here. I brought two axes, but I don't think I need them at all. I've just been using my axe, my walking poles the whole time. So uh, let's carry on. So there's the first top. You can see the cornices, and that's why I'm not anywhere near the edge here on the second top. And I'm just gonna go up to the third top there. It's not that far. Hi guys, so I've reached the last top. It feels a bit more mountainy up here. It's cold wind blowing. The way ahead is more than I would want to solo anyway. And I think that is part of a peak that's been climbed before. But I'm glad I came up here. I'm going nowhere near this cornice here because it's completely hollow. And it's just a really cool place to be. And that's looking down, well, that's Disa up there in the distance. And that's where we would have gone down to the base camp. So unfortunately the expedition has been a failure, but sometimes it's like that. It was circumstances outside our control. And I'm glad I came up here. I just had a day up in the mountains. So I'm gonna head back down to my tent. I should say I've just checked my inReach and I'm at five, six, nine, eight. So that's about 300 above my tent. I've just got to take in this panorama before I go down. Look at that beautiful blue lake down there. Strolling along, holding two sticks in one hand. There's some nice alpine looking peaks there. Sort of stuff you'd see in the Mont Blanc range. I just fell in a hole, you can see it's up to my thigh, which could mean there's some sort of crevasse down there. Let's see if I can get out. Right. Oh. 
Yeah, you never know around here. It's not, there's no signs of crevasses, but there can be one just about anywhere, I think. Yeah, so on closer inspection, it is a crevasse. It's a kind of mini Bergschrund, one, one of those ones that goes across the slope. And uh, that's what happens if you're not concentrating on where you're going and uh, thinking about the filming, because I just stepped straight into it. It's very small, I don't think I could have gone very far. But uh, yeah, something to think about. On we go. Look at those amazing cornices. Hello folks, so here I am standing on the Joshi Pass. I got a message this morning on the Inrich from Tim, who's down at Shimshal village, asking me if I wanted the porters to come up, and I said yes, might as well. Uh, I better get down and tell uh, Mohammed that I've asked the porters to come up, because that's what he'll be wondering about. Uh, see you later. So we come very quickly to quite a tricky looking scree bit. So I think I'll switch the camera off, but you can see the whole route, which basically follows the ridge all the way down to that light, to that brown stuff. And then uh, you get on the brown stuff, which is scree itself, and then down into the valley, which leads to the base camp, which you might be able to see in the distance. The thing is about the way up, it was quite difficult on the scree, but on the way down, it should be a lot quicker because a lot of it will be effectively scree running. Yeah, there are one or two tricky bits coming down there. This next bit looks a bit more reasonable. What's disconcerting about the whole thing is that the drop so big on each side and you wouldn't stop if you fell down there past these rocky bits all the rock is shockingly loose Now for a bit of scree running. Well, hey. It's fairly mellow to say the least. You've always got to be mindful of what's above you on these slopes. Stuff will come clattering down there occasionally, particularly when it's windy. Better carry on down. It's 
So on the way up, at the end of the path going to the base camp, we crossed the stream and we followed the line up next to the stream, up this sort of line next to the stream. And then up. But on the way down, we're sticking to this high line you can see going across the scree slope, which is pretty easy to do going down. Very enjoyable and very fast way of getting down. So I'm just approaching the campsite. I don't think they've heard me yet. Hello! Hello! Hello, Montezia! Here we are! Hiya. Nice to meet you! Hiya. I'll tell you what happened. <laughs> Morning, folks. It looks like it's been snowing. Let's have a look outside. Still is snowing. And of course, milk tea. Okay, sir. Thank you. Omelette and pancake. Wow, that looks great. Here come the porters. Five porters. Four donkeys, that's plenty. Hello. Good to see you. Ishbadin, let's have a look inside the hut. 